Hey everyone, it's Ethan Ormes back again for another video today and welcome back to the channel guys. We are here again for yet another Call of Duty League video and I'm pretty excited to start off today's video because we're going to be taking a look at uh, week one of Major 1 so far and it was a pretty crazy week. Uh, a lot of my predictions did not go very well and uh, well, let's talk about it, alright? So... Of course, uh, there's so much to talk about about each of the teams that played. Um, it, it's it, it was a pretty crazy weekend. So I mean, let's start it off, and we'll go in order of each game. So starting off the weekend, we had Florida versus London. I was thinking Florida was going to be the better team in that series, but that was absolutely not the case at all. London absolutely destroyed Florida. It was not even close, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was not a close series. But nonetheless, London looks very very promising, and this is what I was expecting from them when I had made my prediction at the kickoff. I was expecting London to be this really solid team, and turns out they are. So it's good to see that actually come to fruition. Uh, of course, didn't didn't help for my predictions, but nonetheless. We continue on. We have the Breach versus the Gorillas. I did expect the Breach to win, and they did. So that was nice. It was a pretty decent series. LAG really didn't look that great, um, but Boston looked pretty solid. And I think Boston could be a very competitive team this year. So I'm excited to see how they continue on over the next couple weeks. And then moving on to the Surge and Subliners, um, <clears throat> I really expected the veteran core of the subliners to pick it up but sib i think is the best player in vanguard right now and he's really showing it like this guy is incredible and it was not a close series at all seattle absolutely destroyed new york uh similarly to how london destroyed florida it was a pretty quick day friday then we move on to Saturday. Uh, I was expecting a very easy series for Atlanta, just how Paris looked at the kickoff. But Paris looked really great this weekend, taking phase to the brink. It was a it was a decently close series with Florida. I believe the one of the hard points was not as close, but for the most part, both of their series were very close. And I'll I'll get more into the Florida Paris series in a little bit, but. Paris looks like they actually could be a contending team, which is nice to see. And then moving on to Optic's match of the weekend, we had Optic versus London. Um, <laughs> not a close series, really. I mean, the first two maps weren't very close, and then the next three maps weren't very close. The first reverse sweep of the season comes at the hands of the Royal Ravens. Um really surprised about optic I, I just expect this team to be better because on paper they should be better but they just don't seem to understand the game very well their search their search and destroy just seems very poor so far so you know maybe that's something to do with the leadership and the in-game communicator because who is the guy i mean it's illy but is it is it enough is there enough communication going on i feel like it seems like there's a lot of instances where the communication isn't that great, and uh, well, that gave London the 2-0 um, the 2-0 record on the weekend, and Optic is now 0-2, which is pretty surprising. I mean, there's a lot of surprises here. So uh, then we go to Toronto versus Seattle, a rematch of the kickoff final, uh, a 3-2 series, a round 11 finish, and it was a close one. Uh, I'm not too worried about Toronto. I think they still played really good. And I think, I mean, there was one map that wasn't very close. But like I said, I do think Sib is the best player in the Call of Duty League right now. And uh, I don't really think there's much argument to it. Um, he is absolutely incredible. And he is showing that he could be one of the best players all year long. And as of right now, I mean, the rookie battle is between... Um, uh, Fuck, uh, Sib and Pred for me, but I, I think it's Sib right now. So, uh, shout out to Seattle going two and zero on the weekend, taking down a, a struggling New York and a decent, a really good team in Toronto. Who I think Toronto is still probably up there with top three, maybe top four. 
I'm really not too worried about them moving forward. I think the rest of this event uh, will pan out, hopefully at least. And then we go to the New York uh, Subliners versus LA Gorilla series. I was expecting much, much better out of this New York team, but honestly, this New York team just continued to disappoint me all weekend long, and I think... I think it might continue, unfortunately. I really expected this team to do better than they did, and uh, it wasn't a good series from them whatsoever. Um, yeah, I really I really was expecting much more from New York this weekend. I, uh, I, I really didn't think that it was going to be so bad, but the Gorillas end up getting a win, and it's good to see that the Gorillas as a franchise can actually be competitive. That's nice to see. It. Like I think this year of the CDL really is, so far at least, the most competitive CDL we've had, so that's very good to see. Then moving on to Sunday, we have Florida versus Paris. I actually got that one 100% right, so that's kind of cool. That's one of the few series I've actually gotten right so far this year. My predictions have not been good. But uh, nonetheless, um, a, a relatively close series, except for one of the hard points, I believe. Uh, it was map one or map four, I can't remember. Uh, maybe it was the control, I don't know. There was a map that was not close. Um, but nonetheless, um, I feel like a, a, a relatively expected series. Uh, but I do think Paris has some upside to them, and I really do think that there is a bright spot for the Legion and that they can make it a competitive uh, a competitive week, a competitive major. So I'm excited to see how that goes. And then uh, we have Atlanta versus the Thieves. I was expecting a Game 5. Um, I mean, it was barely a Game 4. The Thieves just squeaked out Game number 1. The Thieves has had the craziest games or some of the craziest hard points on the year already. The comeback from Ultra at the kickoff, and then 250 to 248 against Atlanta. But after that game, Atlanta just kind of took over the series, and it wasn't that close. Uh, and then to close out the weekend, we have Optic versus Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota takes it in, I think it was around 11 in Game 5, and overall, Minnesota... Looked way better here than they did at the kickoff, but there's still some inconsistencies out of both of those teams. So I'm intrigued to see how they look going forward. Now, next week, uh, or well, this week, I guess, is pretty interesting. We have a lot of very interesting series to go through that I'm pretty excited to see. Uh, that I'm very, very excited to see. Let's see. The ones that I'm probably most excited to watch... Paris versus Boston is what I'm very excited to watch. I've had a lot of fun watching Boston, and I'm really looking forward to see what Paris can do. I really like that team. I'm a big fan of Temp and Fellow, so I really enjoy watching them. Um, Boston versus FaZe, that's going to be a fun series to watch as well. I can't wait to see the rookies. I really hope there's tons of great moments because I really like watching Nero and Capsule, and Methods is still one of my favorite players in the league. And TJ, I, I just want TJ to win. TJ is one of those players that I just want to see win. So I'm a big fan of Boston. Uh, hopefully they can make it a competitive series with Atlanta. Um, Florida versus Toronto will be fun. And LA Thieves versus New York will be fun as well. So, yeah, it'll be pretty interesting. Hoping for a, a much better New York. Hoping for some competitive series. Uh, all around. Uh, Seattle only has one match this week, so there's a very high chance that they could go 3-0, and and that's probably what I'll be predicting later this week. But one thing before ending the video, I want to take a look at some stats, because like I said, I think Sib overall is the best player in the league right now, and, and I'm not even going by overall KD. I think this guy is just an absolute menace. Like, this guy is not dying in the respawns. He's playing so, so good in the respawns, and I'm very, very excited to continue watching him. You know, looking at overall KDs on the year, uh, obviously this doesn't include the kickoff event, I believe. So, looking at the top five, we have three rookies in there right now, and their KDs are fucking crazy. A 1.39 from Sib, a 1.37 from Gizmo, a 1.26 from Celium, a 1.19 from Nasty. All of those KDs are going to come down. Uh, a Temp is a player that really stands out for me. He's having a great start to the season, and I hope he's able to continue it. Asim as well. I think Asim is honestly the most um, 
hit or miss or the most uh, wild or the biggest wild card in the CDL because there's a game where he's going double negative and then there's a game where he's going double positive. Like this guy is just so in between. It's crazy. Uh, I think a lot of these numbers are going to actually even out to make much more sense over the next couple weeks. Like if you scroll down here, you see Abizi, Insight, Standy, and Simp are all negative right now. I don't think that's going to last for very long. I mean, Insight had, well, you look at Atlanta, they had two pretty tough series. I mean, Simp and Abizi weren't playing that great. It was the ARs really that dominated. Like, like, like I said, Celium is just a menace. This guy's crazy. And uh, our city's had a really good weekend as well. So I do think Simp and Abizi will obviously pick it up. I can't imagine they're negative players this year. And Insight as well. I mean, a tough series against Seattle. I do think those stats will get better. And Standy as well. I think the more that Minnesota get to figure out this game together, I think the better they're going to be. I mean, it, Standy's still an SND star, so... I'm not too worried about it. And then you you scroll down, you look at Cami. He's at a 0.87. Pretty sure that's going to get better. Octane at 0.87. Pretty sure that's going to get better. Envoy at a 0.9. Pretty sure that's going to get better. Kleenex at a 0.94. Pretty sure that's going to get better. Um, and then continuing down, I mean, Vivid at a 0.82 is not ideal. Fellow at a 0.82, not ideal. Illy at a 0.85 is a big standout as well. Like, there's a lot of players down here that are pretty surprising. Like, Kenny at a 0.7 is very not good. And then Clayster and Neptune, those two players are on New York, and they have, they're have they tied for the second-worst KD in the league. So I'm expecting a lot of things to change over the next couple weeks. Uh, of course, this is the start of the season. So looking at higher point KDs, like this is what I mean. Sib is fucking crazy, dude. Like he is absolutely insane in hard point. Uh, SND so far, let's see. I'm not sure who's at the top here. Yeah. Celium, not surprised. Uh, Capsule, not surprised. I mean, Obviously, some of these guys only played one game, so it's hard to really take a look at the stats right now, but overall, I think over the next few weeks, we'll really get a much better idea of stats. But uh, yeah, that's going to be the end of today's video, guys. Hopefully, you all did enjoy. Let me know your thoughts about week one. I'll be doing my predictions earlier this week than last week because I think that'll be smarter. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Hopefully, you did enjoy, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.